there's been increasing recognition that um, our genetic background plays an important role in heart disease, um, specifically disease that affects the heart muscle and heart rhythm. And so over the past 25 years, um, research that has been pioneered at Brigham and Women's Hospital, and particularly by the Seidman Research Laboratory, has helped to foster the development of the field of cardiovascular genetics. The Cardiovascular Genetics Center is composed of a multidisciplinary team of physicians, scientists, genetic counselors, and nurses, all working together to try to provide the best possible care to patients and families with inherited heart disease, and also to try to bring genetics to medicine, to translate the discoveries from the basic science bench to change our approach uh, to clinical medicine and to clinical practice. An important distinguishing feature of genetic or inherited disease, including inherited heart disease, is that instead of focusing on caring for an individual patient, care must extend to their family as well. So if you are related to a person that has genetic heart disease, you may also be at risk for developing that same condition. So in the Cardiovascular Genetics Center, we see patients and families with a variety of different potentially genetic or inherited heart conditions. That includes hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, familial dilated cardiomyopathy, inherited arrhythmias, um, inherited sudden death, um, Marfan syndrome, and other diseases that affect the aorta, and other less defined conditions with a genetic or familial uh, flavor. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathies is one of the diseases that we really focus on in the Cardiovascular Genetic Center. Um, it is an inherited cardiomyopathy or an inherited heart muscle disease where the heart muscle becomes too thick or hypertrophied. Um, the groundbreaking research at Brigham and Women's Hospital back in the 1980s and 1990s led to the discovery that mutations or changes in the DNA sequence in the genes that make up a structure called the sarcomere actually cause hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. This makes HCM one of the most common genetic heart diseases. It's present in about 1 in 500 to 1 in 1,000 um, people in the general population. The manifestations of HCM can be highly variable. Um, it can range from pa uh, patients who have no symptoms at all um, to those who have severely limiting symptoms um, or life-threatening arrhythmias. Most people with HCM do very well. They have manageable symptoms and live a normal life expectancy, but there can also be very serious consequences. Uh, for instance, patients with HCM are at higher risk for suffering sudden cardiac death and having dangerous arrhythmias than uh, people in the general population. And there are also a subset of individuals with HCM who can develop refractory heart failure and need either heart transplantation or unfortunately uh, succumb to um, end stage heart failure. We also need to remember to care for their family as well. So we usually start with the uh, closest or the first degree relatives um, related to the um, patient that's been diagnosed with HCM. So that means their parents, their siblings, and their children also have about a 50% risk of having HCM as well and they should be evaluated. Um, because um, HCM can develop at any time in life, um, it's important not to just have a one-time evaluation, but to follow people over time to see if manifestations can develop as people uh, grow older. Genetic testing can now be done to try to identify the cause of disease in a particular family. So with genetic testing, we start with the uh, person in the family that has the most clear diagnosis of disease. And um, ideally, we start with a um, family member that has the most serious consequences. At times, we can find changes in that person's DNA or mutations in their DNA that we are quite confident causes the disease in question. And if that's the case, then um, we have been able to establish the genetic cause of the disease in that family. And then we can also extend a much more focused type of genetic testing to their family member. Genetic testing and the res uh, interpreting the results of genetic testing appropriately can be very complicated. The results are oftentimes ambiguous, and therefore it's important to make sure that the family really knows what they're getting into so they can understand the potential benefits of genetic testing as well as the limitations and the implications for the whole family. So it's important um, that genetic testing be pursued in uh, collaboration with genetic counselors who can have these uh, detailed conversations with patients. Right now, treatment is only available to try to mask or palliate symptoms of HCM. Uh, we don't currently have any treatments that can fundamentally change how disease develops or to prevent its uh, development. And we um, recently finished a pilot clinical trial in people with HCM where we targeted uh, 
relatives of patients with HCM that were known to carry the mutation that causes HCM in their family but have not yet developed um, clinically diagnosable um, uh, changes to their heart. We randomized them to receive either diltiazem or a placebo agent um, for anywhere from one to three years and looked to see if there were any changes. There were some hints that it may be able to um, subtly improve some of the early changes in the way that the heart structure um, that are present um, early in the development of HCM. And so um, with this information and with new um, exper experiments in the basic science laboratory, um, we're now in the uh, process of leading a, a bigger um, clinical trial partnering with other um, HCM centers in the U.S. and in Canada to, um, again, try this um, uh, strategy of disease modification. When uh, patients come to our center, we will give them the best possible clinical care, and as well as the uh, potential to be involved in cutting-edge research, where we're really trying to translate these basic science discoveries um, to uh, clinical medicine.